Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Eiken and today we're continuing the Rise of the Robots, which is a campaign where we're only allowed to use Psy active characters like Psyops and the Templar and Sparks. And boys, I got the first spark ready, so it's going to be a pretty interesting mission. We're going to counter Undying Loyalty, one of the hardest dark events, and since we're playing with permanent dark events, that would actually really, really, really suck to have it. And on the other hand, I want to see a spark in action. As a bonus, we're getting an additional scientist. I'm not going to say no to that either. In terms of rookies, we're going to take XQS6 and True Rebel, because both of them have a bond. We're going to take Hogbite, although he's tired. And we're going to take our spark Primus with us. And since I think, given the difficulty of uh, difficult, we're going to run into the Chosen again. I want to switch things up a tiny bit. Uh, we're going to take a Battle Scanner, another underutilized item, and I am hopefully going to spot out the Chosen with that one. Good, that's pretty much it as a preparation, and I would say let's give it a healthy go and see how well we perform with the Spark. Good, and we're ready to go. Since it is the first mission where we do have a spark, I'll go over a couple of uh, the details for playing efficiently with sparks, then explain why the class is probably having a worse reputation than it should have. So sparks, in a nutshell for me, although not as strong as normal characters in the end game, still have a very very nice set of abilities making them an all-around character class that I would uh, not regret taking in, into any combat mission whatsoever. Firstly they start with a lot of hit points it's fantastic. Secondly they do have a ranged heavy weapon which is much better that, than any uh, grenade they can shoot it super, super far, very accurate, high explosion, um, destroys most cover. Thirdly, as you can see, they don't rely on ladders, which in many of uh, the maps, for instance, over here, or even on cars like here, wagons like here, um, front uh, parts of a building, or even high jumps like these, you can simply traverse the terrain to your liking and uh, use it to your full benefit. On top of that, they can hack items, uh, objectives, afar with their drone. They can heal themselves later with a drone. And they, um, on top of that, have overdrive, which essentially allows them once per mission to really go all out, usually when it counts, right? So, Taking all that into consideration, if you compare it to a normal rookie that you're seeing here, it's just so much better. It's not even a fair comparison. Yes, it would need to be compared to squaddies, but even then, the Spark is more than capable of standing its own against stronger, uh, against potential strong classes. And that's really where the class, in my opinion, shines and where it uh, gets most um, of its powers from the very early game and the mid uh, mid tier game it on top of it has a fantastic gun and uh, can use that up to three times with overdrive so if you play the sparks right you can get a lot of uh, mileage out of them just checking yeah th this is fantastic but 4% is too low. We need up, uh, we need upgrades for their drones first. But yeah, you can already see we do have a good chance of hacking at uh, the range. That's a lot of hit points to go through, man. All right, 
Although we do have two packs, which I never really appreciate to start with, we're only we're down to five rounds, so we gotta make our move here. And we gotta be decisive. So let's try to kill the stun lancer first. And we'll take it from there. It's always perfect to start with a miss. What makes an already difficult encounter so much easier. <laughs> Wonderful. Fantastic. Good. We're going to use teamwork because of the failed initial shot. Let's get rid of the faceless. Fortunately, minimum damage. It's not good. I will probably need to use overdrive. All right, so that's one down at least. Don't want to use any of our special abilities yet. But I think we have to. Just because of the first failure. That was unfortunate. We're going into overdrive. I'll keep the explosive for the chosen if she shows up. All right, frame drop. Interesting. Wow, that's a frame drop. Good. We're having a harder time hitting this guy now, but it's still overall okay. Moving on to definitely grabbing that focus here. Fair enough. Good. And now that's five to six, which is still not good enough to kill him. Probably going to get hit once. Position ourselves here. That would lure this guy out at least. Unless he wants to shoot into full into full cover, of course. Yeah, there is no perfect way of dealing with it but I think this is okay can't fully kill him might as well make sure that we can parry and we either shoot one more time or what I prefer we're overwatching yeah that's what I figured we are having an upgraded assassin with us. She can now also summon sever savage allies. And I will end this quickly. Okay. She started right behind the warehouse there. It'll take her one turn. There's the parrying and now it's all a matter of seeing what this guy will do. Lancers are gonna lance. 
Ooh. He decides to move here. And would have 50 50s. Okay, cool. Good. That's one, and we don't have another option. Hmm. Good. Can we flank him? We can not. Would it make sense to go further back? Yeah, probably, because we're not standing right next to the assassin. And we're getting weapon proximity bonus, so it's higher than a 50-50. All of a sudden, it's a 62% chance. Okay. Doesn't work again. Fair enough. Let's move up. And this could be a kill. There we go. Reloading. And let's continue pepper this guy with all we have. Yeah, I want to get the full focus up before continuing. Nice. Stun for two rounds, mean, meaning it'll lose its next turn. And that even means if the Chosen is coming in, we can parry. There we go. Okay, hide behind the car, how about that? And we see how this is how this is going to continue. Ugh, more HP to chew through. That's not good. Just think about the amount of turns that she gets for free. Unbelievable. Good, let's steal with this guy here first. I want it to fall on the ground so that it covers the lower section. Let's see if we can spot her out. This is not going to end our turn. Did not hit her, unfortunately. Eight points of damage, which is a good start. finish up with or finish or continue with only f with uh, hitting for four points of damage or we'll move into here and let true rebel just finish this guy Okay, so definitely wanted to hit so 100% the aim in itself together with weapon range would not be good enough, which means we need to stay on high ground.
There we go. That's the second focus that we needed. Continuing to parry in the hopes of the Chosen moving right back into us. Interesting, she just vanished. Okay. Problem with that building is... We gotta figure out where exactly she is at. I'm willing to give up one action for that. So this should theoretically spot her out. Did not. Hmm. That's unfortunate. Very unfortunate. High ground over here. It's time to shred her and hopefully get her down. Can't amplify. Well, I could amplify, but that would result in overall uh, in less overall damage. There is the shell shock we were looking for. All the way up to here that's probably not required instead let's try to execute her no nope, didn't work we're blocking the path by standing firmly in the way And she's almost down. Almost, that is. Harbor wave? Yes. Perfect. We're immune to harbor wave thanks to the um, mind. Uh, what's it called? Mind shield. Thanks to the mind shield. We are reviving and getting them back on the feet ASAP, as Bradford demanded. Let's see, what else can we do? Let's very much start with spotting her out and giving her a proper treatment. Well, hello there. Nice. Nice. Worked like a charm. And there we go. Although the battle scanner did not really work super well, I still feel it was the right idea. In case you're wondering why it didn't work, the battle scanner has a problem with buildings and will try to always scan the upper layer since she was not on the rooftop you did not get a reading on her it would have looked completely different in these in the open uh, it's just one of the disadvantages of uh, the battle scanner I was still trying to use it but yeah whatever it happens one more pack Maybe even not that. Three rounds and we have a 
quite a distance to go. But, thanks, oh, wait, unfortunately not, not yet. I was about to say, but thanks to the wonderful ranged hacking, don't even need to go that far. All right, full cover for our rookies. Hogbite is just carefully following at this point. Overwatch, 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 Overwatch. We're still good. We can get there. We have we have overdrive if need be. This here should be position where we can hack. Okay, so good news, it is a position where we can hack. Hogbite can reach all of them, that is even better news. We got overdrive, we should have that one secured. Let's start. From back here, we're getting down the first one. Time for some overdriving. Giving us yet another action. That is unfortunate. If we're not, if we're not hitting the faceless one, we wouldn't be able to kill it. And I rather prefer to get the stun lance out of the way because the faceless one is pretty stupid, and we'll just run to get hogbite, and hogbite can parry. There's the parry I was talking about. Good. Like I mentioned, we can hack whilst being away. And you know what? Why not being greedy? Well, both of them wouldn't have worked. Good. Unfortunately, we need to reload. So no more fire support from our mech. You can see, however, I mentioned it a couple of times, how good autoloaders are just to keep that momentum that I was talking about earlier. Perfect. Soften it up. And we are Taking some loot, another Alarium core, that's great. And then we're finishing this guy, and that should be it. Hell yeah, that was a great mission. Status confirmed. All hostiles are down and the area is secure. Five extra ability points, flawless mission. And the mech worked out very, very well. The spark did its job. Spotting out, shredding when needed, just shredded two uh, points of armor indeed, and overall dealt a lot of damage, had great agency in just shutting down the enemies. Good, let's see, did Hogbite get a promotion? No. Nah. No one got a promotion, that's unfortunate. But we got an LRM core. That is helpful. And a scientist. Plus we stopped Undying Loyalty. Plated Armor is now down to two days. Wow, that will be a huge, a huge benefit for us. 
We also got that extra power going, which means we can open up one of these guys here. And start with the clearing, as mentioned before. We could even upgrade the resistance ring. Yeah, let's maybe not go get ahead of ourselves. I want to purchase the armor upgrade as well. Armor upgrade also will improve the melee damage that Hogbite is doing. We're now down to... Yeah, we, we need to make contact. We got the intel. That's fine. Don't need the supplies yet. Let's make contact. I just want to get to the to eastern um, US the east coast and get the facility there because the avatar project is a problem nice we got ourselves the GTS so let's take a look at the combat tactics yeah squad size one no-brainer Squad size 2 will require a captain ring. Hogbite is not there yet, but we eventually will get there. And unfortunately, although we could train people, that would mean they are no longer usable in this run. So the GTS is really just for one class upgrade and squad size upgrades. Well, it is what it is. Let's put another person here. Let's also... Uh, still don't want to upgrade because it's costly. I want to first of all get the armor in one day and then we can talk about upgrading and getting another resistance order. Nice. That's going to be so good, guys. Whew. So, we got Tempest Gauntlets that we can upgrade. We got Predator Armor for our uh, for our mechs. And on top of it, we're getting Mimic Beacons for free. Oh, thank you, game. Thank you. Yeah, I think we're going to go for Gauss weapons because it's inspired. It gifted us five days. It, we're, we're just so fast with the research at this point because we got five scientists, uh, the laboratory for six, two additional because we built up. Uh, so that's eight and then 20% bonus on top of it uh, from the continent bonus. So yeah, the lab um, rush technology uh, certainly has paid itself by now. We, from now on, get a nice little return on investment. So we're going for Gauss weapons and, and afterwards the Advent Mech Breakdown and probably Mutant Autopsy. This here is for better grenades. This here is for blue screen rounds and Gauss weapons for various weapon upgrades, including uh, the ones for our mech. So let's see what we would want to do. I like the Tempest Gauntlets. That's great. Before we do it, uh, though, we need more Elerium and more alloys. We definitely need more alloys for the armor. And the, the Tempest uh, Gauntlets also need alloys. I would want to have the, that upgrade. Not going to lie. And a Mimic Beacon certainly isn't bad either. I should see if any of the troops have been keeping count on alien kills. So before we continue, because there is a chance that we're very soon going to fill up the Avatar project entirely. Avenger plotting new course. Market is open. Let's buy... Oh, that's expensive. <laughs> Another scientist would be fun, but we don't have the intel to support that. No, I think we're going to purchase 
more alien alloys because we're at this critical point where believe it or not that can make the difference in the next missions and we had a couple of really close calls already I don't want to stress our luck too much so armor number one predator armor that will be a huge benefit specifically since we now can take two items we are down to 20 supplies we can now pick up two items and use them can we sell something that would make sense? Yeah, Advent Officer's Corpse, definitely. A laser sight for 20, yes, we can sell that. We got, still got an advanced laser sight, but they are very interested, so it's double the price. Certainly will do that. Um, we will need the sectored corpses, at least some of them for mine shields. Faces corpses are needed. Stun Lancer corpses are not needed, Viper corpses are needed, Purifier corpses not. Now that's the best I can do, 70 and we need 100 for a Mimic Beacon. Which I really would like to get. I don't think we need the Trooper corpses anymore. So that was a long war thing um, where you needed them so might as well do that then we can build one mimic beacon and one other thing since we're now having a GTS I would like to get a couple of personal uh, combat sims, superior conditioning for instance, on Hogbite. That's already a great starter. We can't do that with a mech. And we need to wait until it gets its weapon upgrades. Everybody else cannot be upgraded yet, but we got finally better armor and that'll allow us plus mimic beacon and that'll allow us to use the rookies even further they still continue to be valuable good making contact and there's the next facility and that triggered unfortunately that triggered unfortunately my OCD ness. I cannot let the Avatar project uh, go down. We need those extra days. So we could take Hogbite with us. Continues to be tired. But yeah, it is what it is. Look at his hit points though. Wow. That's fantastic. And XQ6 plus True Rebel will, will make sense. And let's take Sonar here, mainly because Halop and the, G, uh, the DM are a pair. You know what? We can, well, they are not a pair, they are bondmates, but pretty much the same. Let's equip everybody with at least one grenade. Can we build something else? You know what? Blue screen rounds would be fantastic. But yeah, that needs to wait just a tiny bit more. True Rebel here, we'll take the Mimic Beacon and then we're ready for the next mission. Still got those rookies rocking with us. In the meantime, with their new armor, they are no longer one-shots. Two, four, six, eight hit points. Oh, that's better than nothing. 
It's still not great, but it is better than nothing. And we got magnetic weapons. Keep in mind, all of those here are already upgraded once. So might as well give them a second upgrade. Once we are going to plasma tier, then they are pretty much maximized in their damage. They got the individual weapon upgrade and a highest tier upgrade. Oh wait, we could theoretically get a plasma tier upgrade, but yeah. Doesn't matter that deep in the game we're not going to use rookies anymore for now. They are useful and that brings us to the end of today's mission. We are now actively, actively using the sparks and I hope you're enjoying it. And uh, the next mission is indeed the black side, the infamous black side to reduce the avatar progress. Afterwards, we need to speed up and get to the first facility. Boy, oh boy, uh, this year has gotten more intense than I was expecting. One last look at our progress. The school jack here needs 15 days, you know, and just because I have this eerie feeling that we might need to speed that one up, let's do it eight days and that's still fine because once we're done, the school jack is another measure or another means to reduce the avatar progress with uh, that, um, uh, with school jacking one of the advents. Yeah, and that brings us to the end of this mission, guys. If you want to support the channel, I mentioned it a couple of times, feel free to leave a like and a comment down below. That lets the YouTube algorithm know that you actually enjoy the content. Elsewise, the algorithm does know and the channel doesn't grow. Thank you and have a great one. Bye-bye.